What's up, subscribers? Sunjutsu here, and today I wanted to go ahead and give you my top five reasons why World War One will be the next Total War historical title. Now, this is not officially confirmed or anything like that, that this is the era that they're going to be doing, but I want to go ahead and jump the gun and say that this is the era that they're doing, whether it's going to be the beginning of the game starting in World War One era or early 1900s, or if that's going to be toward the end of the game, is I don't know, it's not known, but more than likely it'll be the end of the game toward end game. You'll see tanks and planes and stuff like that. But I wanted to go ahead and give you my reasons why, my top five reasons why I think that this is going to be the title that is going to come after or in between the Total War Warhammer uh, the, uh, expansions and stuff. So let me go ahead and jump right in. So guys, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about a GoFundMe account that I'm starting now. You guys always pulled through. The last two times I've done this, uh, I've done it once before for my mother-in-law. If you guys remember, you guys have been with the channel long enough. She was uh, she has she was diagnosed with terminal bone cancer, and um, you guys your donations helped us out a great deal, especially with her medication. And actually now she's doing a lot better, uh, just because she had a stem cell style replacement, so she's doing a lot better. And then I went ahead and made another video supporting another YouTuber who was down on his luck. And he also made a GoFundMe account. And um, he reached his goal. And I'm not saying it was just because of my video, but I did try to help him out a lot um, by making that video and promoting him and promoting and trying to help out his situation so he can continue making YouTube videos. And he is, at this point, still making YouTube videos. But I'm making a GoFundMe account. This is the first GoFundMe account that I'm making for my channel. Just this morning, when I was driving back from work, my car blew up, basically. My engine blew up. And uh, you guys should be seeing some pictures of it right now. The car engine is just in pieces. I'm not exactly sure what happened. The, the cruel irony is that I had just paid this car off last week. I paid it off, put, paid off the last $2,000 I had on it with my income tax, and then this week it decided to completely die on me. Now, we have a couple options available to us. What they're saying is that we might need a whole other engine, which is a couple of grand, three grand, four, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. I haven't gotten an estimate 100% yet. I think it should be around like three grand-ish for that engine. Or we could buy another car. And um, with that other car, which is another car payment that I did not want, is uh, probably going to be we probably need about like two to three to f around three or four thousand dollars down ish for that car. That's why I'm putting the limit to this GoFundMe at five thousand because if I pay for this car engine, I still have to pay for a couple other things that I was going to do with the car, say um, get new tires, things like that. If I'm going to buy a new car. Uh, I need money so I can put down on it so I don't have an extremely high um, high monthly payment. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and start saying, oh, come on guys, I need this because, you know, I'm not going to be able to do YouTube videos because I'm going to be working extra because I need to pay for this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I need to work a lot of overtime, this and that. You guys already know I have two jobs. I have a full-time fam well, full family. <laughs> I have two, one full-time job, one part-time job, a family, and then I do this on YouTube. I'm not going to start saying that because, no, I always try to go ahead and make as many videos as possible um, just to go ahead and keep up with, you know, keep you guys entertained, do what I can. And I'm not going to say that, but I will tell you the truth that I will be having to do a lot of extra time at my jobs to pay for it, save up money, put money back in my savings. And so that might, that may or may not take away some time that I have to work on my YouTube videos. I'm not gonna say it's gonna take all the time, but it may take some. I don't. I don't know yet. So, I'm, I'll go ahead and ask you guys right now if you guys can please donate. And like I told you guys before, when you guys and you guys really came through for my mother-in-law, a dollar each, even just a dollar each. I mean, I know, you know, I know a lot of you guys are younger, and you might not have that 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 those savings in there. You guys might not have money. But at least a dollar from your debit credit card and put it in, in the GoFundMe account would really help me out. Get me to my goal so I can continue making, you know, 
YouTube videos without having to work an extreme amount of overtime. I mean, like I said, I'm not going to say it's going to hinder my YouTube videos because I'm, I always try to put videos out. It just means that there might be a little slightly less more videos than there are right now. And I don't know. Again, guys, I really wanted to go ahead and just make this. This is my first GoFundMe for my for my for my um, channel. And I wanted to go ahead and see if you guys can help me out. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description below to the GoFundMe. There should be a link right now that you guys should be seeing on the um, video. And um, I'll go ahead and post this up on my Twitter and my Facebook. Thanks again, guys, if you can. And if you can't, thanks again for watching so much. Now let's continue to your regular scheduled programming. Number five, the underway stance. Now, this isn't particularly new. Uh, the stance is, but it's not particularly new. Being thrown into a a uh, a battle that a battle map and a battle that has specific guidelines. We mainly we mainly got it when we did ambush battles, uh, where the units, um, the army who's ambushing, gets to deploy on each side of the enemy so basically the way i'm looking at it is that the underway stance what they have told us is that it basically if you attack a unit or army that has the underway stance or you get attacked by one that has the underway stance you get taken down into the underway now this is total war warhammer and if you guys don't know the underway is the ancient route of tunnels that the dwarves have built and it's supposed to be a much more narrow pass and it's like a almost like a scenario type battle giving the dwarves the edge and you can go ahead and fight them there because you got sucked into the underway well this got me thinking this is i mean we have these stances so the best way to make trench warfare work in my opinion at least at the at, to the extent that we saw it in well not we saw but that they saw in world war one is to have it be a stance so your armies make stances if they make the trench warfare stance then you or trench stance you can go ahead and click it in my opinion this this is just speculation of how it would work but this is one of the reasons i want to give it that why world war one would be pretty good and why it would work is that the uh this stance itself uh, once you click on it, it'll create, it'll have your 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 um your army looking like they're kind of like huddled up, on behind a barrier, and you could have it have a radius, or like a much wider range than the stances that we have now you know, that we have on in the game now have. So much wider range to encompass a little bit longer. So if you hit anywhere into that area where that army is in that stance, you'll be sucked into a scenario style battle that is the battle that is a, a trench warfare style battle and that's the way i could see this working because that way i mean your army really can't move if you're in this stance so it'll be risky but you encompass a large area a much larger area with these trenches and if you have like three or four armies three or four or five armies and they all have trenches yeah you could hold up a, you could hold a spot and have it on, on the campaign map and have it be you know dangerous to to basically cross but at the same time that forces the enemy or your the other player to go either go around or to force their way through see if they can get through a spot where you don't have that much men and and, and not much heat on that spot so the underway stance gets number five because i feel like state like this stance itself not specifically the underway but mainly stances that'd be the best way that trench warfare would work and that's one of the biggest proponents of people who are naysayers on world war one that say that uh the the style of total war wouldn't be, be suitable to, to world war one or war, even world war two because of mainly because of trench warfare so that's why it gets the number five spot Number four, CA hired a developer from the Great War mod. Now, not a lot of people know about this, but I try to keep as current as I can with uh, Total War news. And Jack Lusted posted something on uh, one of the Total War forums talking about them. They hired, uh, his name is Mitch Heasty. If, I'm assuming it's Heasty, the, the way I pronounce it. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. I probably butchered it, but uh, it looks like it's Heasty, Mitch Heasty, and he uh, is one of the developers, one of the people who was working on the Great War, the Great War mod. Now, 
Um, let's see here. He's a, he's gonna be a design intern. This is a while back too, so he might be he ha might have more input in the designs of the future games and stuff like that. But they hired somebody that had already had experience in the Great War mod. And even in the post, you guys are reading it right now. It talks about yes that he was part of the the Great War mod that brought tanks to Napoleon total war. So. Uh, not only do they identify the fact that the reason, not not the reason that they hired him, but one of the achievements that he created working with the Great War mod team is that they had uh, tanks and stuff like that and, and you know, in, in, um, in the mod itself. So not only did that make almost the impossible possible, a lot of people didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, they hired this guy, this modder, and now he's working with them 100% full-fledged. Uh, full time, as as far as the post goes, and so in my opinion, that's that pushes the 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 um the concept of the next Total War title that they're historical title they're probably going to be working on because I believe this is about a year ago this knowledge came this information came out so um it'd probably be about three or four years are developing this historical Total War title so that they hired this developer from the Great War mod. I mean, it just kind of pushes the fact that they're they're going for a great war feel. They're going, they're trying, they're trying to bring somebody in who has experience with the War War One scenario when it when it comes to Total War, and that's why this gets number four slot. Number three, Fall of the Samurai. I know, I mean, this is just it's, it's a game. It's a full full fledged game, standalone expansion, and I'm giving it, I'm I'm putting it in this list as a reason why the next uh, Total War title is going to be World War One? Well, the reason I'm giving it, I'm putting it so high on the list and I'm putting it in here is because I feel like The Fall of the Samurai, well, personally, if, to me, that's one of my favorite titles so far, um, you know, and that's coming from me playing since Rome 1. So I, I loved Fall of the Samurai. I loved being able to have lines. I loved the way they sh the, the, the shooting was. The shooting was a lot more vicious than and a lot more violent than it was not just because of blood just because of the way um how far advanced how, how much farther advanced this game was in time so the way this game kind of set it up i felt like after that they weren't going to do rome 2 they were going to do something far in the future i thought that at that point we're going to get like a victoria or a world war one but we got rome 2 and then we got attila so uh with the fall of the samurai we have guns we have steamships we have basically battleships or the concept of battleships we have railroads, which is one of the biggest things that um, this mod would need. I mean, not this mod, this this game, this World 1 game would need. They would need uh, things that are futuristic, like railroads and stuff like that, to be able to... And the way they did it in, in, in Fall of Samurai, where you ha your provinces have to build these railroads, build these infrastructure, and then you can move units and armies along them and stuff like that and supplies. That was genius. I loved it. Um, so for Fall of the Samurai, you also get uh, the Gatling gun, which is basically a machine gun. You get, uh, I don't know if you get bombers in this one. I, I think maybe you, you can mod them in, but uh, well, even with ninjas, you can basically they throw bombs or grenades type, um, you know, projectiles. So I feel like Fall of the Samurai is a perfect example of getting into a more technologically um, advanced age and and how it it reflects on total war and and how it works and i do like it and i mean there are many mods that add maps that have trench and stuff like that so i feel like fall of samurai is a perfect example of this and that's the reason it gets a number three slot number two tanks now this is just referring to war uh the total war uh, warhammer and how they have the steam tanks for the empire now this is the first time we're getting officially anyway tanks in the total war game and now um it can be said that maybe they hired uh the uh developer from the great war mod and he helped sort of with the developing of this the development of these uh these tanks but i think they hired him later on i feel like i, I think they said that they were uh, developing this game way for, before that so but uh, you never know what the design process and what times they have to focus on things so um the tanks in total war warhammer i mean how could you go from 
having tanks in a Total War game with Total War Warhammer and then having the next historical title not have tanks in them. I mean, uh, in my opinion, it really doesn't make sense. I feel like it'd be, it, it wouldn't be too bad being able to jump from, like, say, a Fall of the Samurai type era to Rome 2 and then Attila and then from Attila to, like, a War 1 era and then have, like, a couple other that are that are kind of more advanced and then going back to maybe, like, China or something. So uh, with tanks themselves, uh, they're going to be a great, uh, great um, I guess war machine of the battlefield uh hopefully they're not too overpowered in total warhammer but uh they should have the same power as the tanks or similar as world war one style tanks um but i feel like world war world war one style tanks should break down more should have more errors in them but but i mean just tanks tanks are already in total war warhammer i feel like that is the reason enough um, to be able to say, like, the next historical title is going to have tanks in it as well, which leads me into my number one slot. Air power. Now, that is the number one slot because once you go into air and add that third dimension into warfare, you really can't go back. I mean, you can, but you have to keep going with the aerial combat now. In Total War Warhammer, we get dragons, we get... Um, griffins, we get all sorts of flying creatures, but we also get helicopters, essentially gyrocopters. We get, we just had a video of the dwarves having, I believe it's the dwarves, uh, gyro bombers. We had that video from Creative Assembly, so basically bombers. I mean, it wouldn't be a stretch to think that there, you could also have blimps and stuff like that in this game as well. So people are saying, well, I mean, they have aerial units, but the way they perform on the battlefield in, in Warhammer or what we've seen in Total Warhammer is completely different than how they would have performed say in a World 1 type setting. I believe so too. I feel like maybe blimps and stuff like that um they could be as they could be on the World 1 battlefield like on a normal battlefield but planes and dogfights and stuff like that and um and bombers they would need their own dimension of combat. Uh, they would need another another um, another layer. So if they fought in the air, then it would be a battle map in the air with all of them combined. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that because we didn't even think we were going to get naval battles back in Medieval 2. And we got them in Empire and they added that extra dimension of water and, and just the ships and stuff like that. So I feel like the air power and having that extra layer in Total War Warhammer, you really can't go backwards. Uh, I mean, like I said, you can, but I mean, you don't want to. So you really, I really can't see them going backwards and going back to China right away. I feel like, or or any, I keep saying China because uh, Prince of Madison was saying that that's what he thinks might be it for the most part. So, I mean, I, I mean, I would assume that's the only other uh, era that I can think of that they would want to go and and visit, but. Other than other, I mean, there are other eras, but that one probably is my main one. If it's not um, medieval three or medieval three styled, or um, which we already got with Constantine, sort of, or uh, a Victorian style game. So, um, air combat. I feel like this is the number one reason why I believe that the next Total War game is going to be a historical Total War game that is in World War One era, whether it's going to be late game or early game, I don't know, um, but I'm excited to see what it is, guys. Uh, go ahead and keep in contact with me if you guys know any information, if you guys keep up with the news. I keep up with the news too, but sometimes I miss things, so let me know if you hear any more information on this historical Total War uh, game that's coming out, and I'm pretty sure that my money is on a World War One style game, but or even at least a Victorian style game. So I believe that's going to be it. But it could be anything at this point. None of this is officially confirmed. This is all my speculation. Um, but anyway, guys, what do you guys think about this? What era do you guys think is going to be the next Total War game? And what are the things that you don't think will uh, translate effectively from a war from war one into total war let me know in the comment section below let me know let's even get over 50 likes for the new historical total war game and let's even get it past 50 if you guys believe that it's going to be a war one one victoria style total war game um and as always guys if you like what you see here and you like to see more go ahead and get your gun and shoot a couple bullets to that sub subscribe button not for real just metaphorical bullets into that subscribe button and become a subscriber today this is going to be some good news signing off
was out a great deal, especially with her medication. And actually now she's doing a lot better uh, just because she had a stem cell style replacement. So she's doing a lot better. And then I went ahead and made another video supporting another YouTuber who was down on his luck. And he also made a GoFundMe account. And um, he reached his goal. And I'm not saying it was just because of my video, but I did try to help him out a lot um, by making that video and promoting him and promoting in in between the Total War Warhammer uh, the, uh, expansions and stuff. So let me go ahead and jump right in. So guys, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about a GoFundMe account that I'm starting now. You guys always pulled through the last two times I've done this. Uh, I've done it once before for my mother-in-law, if you guys remember. You guys have been with the channel long enough she was uh she has she was diagnosed with terminal bone cancer and um you guys your donations helped us this is the era that they're doing whether it's going to be the beginning of the game starting in world war one era or early 1900s or if that's going to be toward the end of the game is i don't know it's not known but more likely it'll be the end of the game toward end game you'll see tanks and planes and stuff like that but I wanted to go ahead and give you my reasons why, my top five reasons why I think that this is going to be the title that is going to come after or... What's up, subscribers? Sunjutsu here, and today I wanted to go ahead and give you my top five reasons why World War One will be the next Total War historical title. Now, this is not officially confirmed or anything like that, that this is the era that they're going to be doing, but I want to go ahead and jump the gun and say that this is trying to help out his situation so he can continue making YouTube videos, and he is, at this point, still making YouTube videos. But I'm making a GoFundMe account. This is the first GoFundMe account that I'm making for my channel. Just this morning, when I was driving back from work, my car blew up, basically. My engine blew up. And uh, you guys should be seeing some pictures of it right now. The car engine is just in pieces. I'm not exactly sure.